Let's reflect on what's been happening in the Premier League this afternoon. Let's uh, start, shall we, with Merce, who was watching uh, his old side, Arsenal. And in the end, it was a pretty comfortable afternoon for Arsenal, beating Nottingham Forest uh, by three goals to nil. Was it comfortable in the end, Merce? Yeah, very. Yeah, very. I thought they were outstanding. First half, they started really well. Must-win game. For me, it was a last-chance saloon. Got to keep on winning now. And they started the game really well. Brilliant goal by Saka. Saka... Completely different player when he's playing with Odegaard. When yeah. Odegaard plays and they both play down that right, the way they interact and they're both, you know, singing off the same hymn sheet, that, that phenomenal and great goal by Saka. Runs across the guy and he whips it back the other way. Yeah, and then they played in second gear, to be fair, and then Party come on, got another weldy. And then when Yeri, I mean, 17, I mean, what a talent that kid is, gets a good goal. They needed to win. They showed, they showed a bit of armoury and then they stepped it off a bit and got ready for midweek. We know they're capable of going on a really good run. We, yeah. we saw that last season. They came back from that mid-season break and were absolutely phenomenal. They've got Sporting away next without the Ruben Amarim factor. And then they've got West Ham at home, Manchester United at home. We, we know they had to win. You, you can't be nine points away from Liverpool and, and drop points today yeah. at home to a very good Forest side away from home oh, so yeah, far this been season. Good but that, that's massive for them, isn't it? They, oh, but they now have to go on a long run, don't they? Yeah, they've got some good fixtures coming up. They've got some good fixtures. You look at their like, next seven or eight games, you'd expect them to near on win all of them or maybe draw one, really, if they want to put a run together. They've had a hard start. They've played the top six... The other five teams that finished in the top five last at the end of the season, they've played all of them this season already yeah, and, and played Bournemouth away, which is not an easy game. So they've had a hard start. Now there's a thing, after hard games become a little bit easier, mm. they've got to keep on winning. They showed their arm, they were outstanding. The best I've seen them this season, in my opinion, Odegaard makes a difference. He just... He's just the heartbeat, he makes them yeah, tick, Yeah, he picks it up. And as I say, Saka's a completely different player. I thought he was outstanding, Saka, as well. And... Yeah, that, it was just a real, real good result and be able to leave Declan Rice on the bench as well. Uh, and just picking up on Ethan Wanieri, because he's, he's 17 years, 247 days to be precise. He becomes Arsenal's second youngest Premier League scorer after Cesc Fabregas. We know he's got the potential. He's shown that again today. I guess the question is long term, can he fulfil it? Is he in the right place to make sure that potential's fulfilled? I think so. I think Arsenal's a very good club, very good club. We've got, you've got to get looked after. It depends who's looking after him. You know, people are going to get in his ear on. They'll go, I'll oh, get away, you need to play. He's at a great club. Yeah. Don't leave there too early. Don't leave there too early. You know, for me, be patient. He's 17 years of age. He's behind top players. He'll keep on learning and learning. But he will be, he'll be a superstar. He is a top player. I've watched him play against Inter Milan. He come on. Every time he comes on, he does something special mm. in the game. And today, he goes and scores another good goal. But he went past Morello, like... Muriel, what's his name? Murillo. 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 Oh, he went past him like he wasn't there. And he's decent. Yeah. He run at him, just done a step over. Went round him, bent it, just past the post. Yeah, a real, real talent. Just got to make sure he keeps his head, keeps on working hard. And his chance will come. But... Take your time. You know, you're 17, you're at a massive football club in Arsenal. He's, he's not lacking belief, though, is he? Even though he's so young, around those kind of players, this, this man backs oh, he does. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's not shy. He's not shy. He doesn't come on and, and, and think, oh, I better not do anything. I'll just get it and give it. He, he, he plays and he wants the ball. He gets it. He'd done it at uh, San Siro uh, before the international break. Would come on for 10 minutes, just kept... And they give him the ball. You know when someone's decent when the older players give you the ball all the yeah. time, you know. So, yeah, just make sure, you, you know, as soon as you get noises and people looking after you or people around you and go, oh, you should be playing every week and this and that. But well, where are you going to go and play every week? You know, at the moment, I think he's at the right place with, with top quality players he's playing with and training with every... Arsenal play That's Forest good. tomorrow. Here's Mikel Arteta live. He was able to, to do part of that session, so that's good. And Saka... And Rice. Bukai and Declan as well. They have the first session today, partial session, so very good as well. And Ben White, because we've got the news that we're doing yeah. the international break. Ben is going to be out for, for months, months, unfortunately, yes. How long has he sort of been struggling with it? It's when been different kind of a struggle. It's never been the same thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we had to make a decision. It's not been improving the last few weeks, unfortunately. We know that Ben is going to push every boundary. But uh, it got to a point that we had to protect the player. And, um, and we decided to do the surgery. He agreed with that. And obviously, that's going to keep him out for, for a few months. A few months. So, when, I mean, when you say a few months, that could be anything. What, have you got a ballpark figure? I don't know at the moment. We have to see how the... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> how he reacts post-surgery, 
uh, I don't expect him to be half of a season, uh, half of a year, but um, I cannot tell you exactly. And a couple more, and then we're done. Cal Fiore. Ricky trained, Ricky trained today. Yep. So um, <clears throat> his rehab has gone really well. He was able to do certain things uh, last week with the physios. He trained on the pitch this week. We trained with us today as well. So in he's back in the squad. Uh, he will be in the squad. And Tierney and Tommy Asu, and then I think we're done. Yeah. Kieran, uh, not yet. It, uh, he had a couple of sessions with the team, but uh, not ready yet to be with the team. And Tommy Asu is going to be out as well for a period. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone left that we haven't? You went through a lot of players. <laughs> the moment, so, um, <clears throat> not that I can think of. Okay. Um, in, I know that you like to break the seasons down into blocks, and in that last block, um, there were no Premier League wins. Mm. So I wondered how much you'd taken this time to almost reset, reset yourself, reset the squad, where you've maybe gone for inspiration, how you thought about just getting your sides back with their mojo, the sort of processes you've been through? Well, analysing everything that we've done, the reason why we haven't won games is that because the opponent have been superior to us, the clear answer is no. Um, should we won more of those games, the answer is yes. Um, do I like what our team is doing? The answer is yes, but we have to improve certain things in terms of, uh, especially how we have defended and attacking the box. But uh, overall, I can think of a lot of things, but I need to understand how the players are. And the only way to do that, apart of communicating with them on the phone, is when they come back. And the energy of the staff and players yesterday, it was unbelievable. That's the joy of being with these guys in this journey. That uh, They love being here, they love to be back with us, and, uh, and that brings the energy up straight away. It's not much that I need to do, um, but it's always good to paint the picture and, uh, and make sure that we are in the right track. And just one more for me about the other big Premier League news that's come out. Um, Pep is staying on. Yeah. How was that news received in the Arteta household? If it's what he really wants, and I'm sure it is, congratulate him. I already did it and uh, I'm happy for him because I want the best for him. It's great for the Premier League. Is it great for you and Arsenal's title ambitions? Well, we can only do what is up to us, and we have to be our very best to try to achieve what we want. What the others can do is not our decision. Okay, thank Thanks, you. Alex. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Tomorrow will be your 250th match in charge of Arsenal in all competitions. Yeah. I wanted to ask you how much you've enjoyed the experience. A lot. <laughs> and how satisfied you can be with what you've achieved so far. Well, extremely... Um, grateful, very happy, um, enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I enjoy it because of the people that I work with every single day and because I understand how lucky we are to be sitting where I am. And, um, and you always want more. You know? I mean, I feel a uh, huge pride to see the people that work in the organization, how they feel about the club right now, um, what we transmit as a football club, as a team, uh, the people that I work with. but. Uh, is about winning. At the end, you want to win more. You want to win big trophies, and uh, and we are on that journey. Do you have another 250 in you? If it's about energy and and what I love doing, for sure. Just on Nottingham Forest, 11 points with them on the table. Has their form this season come as a surprise to you? Well, they've been really good. They've been really consistent. They've been top against the, the best opposition, especially. So big credit to Nuno, the coaching staff, for what they are doing. Um, very clear their intentions, how they manage to take the games where they want. Um, really impressed, to be fair, with what they've done. Unbeaten at home this season, how much confidence does the home support give you playing at the Emirates? Yeah, we, love, we love playing at the Emirates. We know that. Uh, we have a unique atmosphere with our supporters there, and uh, and again, the way I saw the team uh, the last 48 hours gives me a lot of confidence that tomorrow we're going to be full tail to go on and try to win again. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, Miguel. How are you? Hi. Very good. Thank you. Um, we asked about your 250th game in charge of Arsenal. <laughs> what would you say your achievements are? If I ask you right now, what is the one or two things that you've massively achieved in those 250 games? I would bring uh, bringing the club together, 100%, uh, lifting the spirit, uh, giving a very clear DNA to the football club, um, 
and I said pride again um, to be representing this club and these shirts from the players and everybody involved at the club in the way that is expected at this level. Is there anything you need to do now add trophies? Well, there's not the only one. It has, you have to maintain a lot of the things that you do. Um, sometimes you achieve them, but they can drop very quickly. So it's maintaining them. That's a word that you have to do consistently every single day. But now it's about winning. That's the next step for sure. You asked about Pep's new contract. You said you were happy for him. You congratulated him. Yeah. Did you ever think he wasn't going to stay? Did you, have, you, have you ever seen, have you seen signs recently that he was getting bored or tired? Of the <laughs> I had no clue, to be fair. And he's done that in the past as well in Barcelona. It was every year, then in Bayern. When I was there, it was very similar. But uh, I don't know. It's his decision. Uh, he seems very happy with the club as well. So congratulations. And finally, for me, from now until Christmas, a lot of games, both domestically and in Europe. Yeah. More in the Premier League because of Liverpool's fantastic start and maybe you and City not having the run of formula wanted in the last few weeks. How big is tomorrow and how big are the next six weeks? Yeah, for sure. It's a lot of game, as you said. It's, it's about building momentum, getting results and getting back-to-back -back, uh, wins, and, and that will create, um, again, the energy that we need, the belief that we need with a lot of the good things that we are doing. Thank you, George. Miguel, uh, just on the 250, you must be very proud of that. I mean, that's quite a considerable... Our, our swing have done, I think, 1,200, but, you know, 250... <laughs> <laughs> that's perspective, you know? <laughs> what is a lot and what is very little. No, but I mean, in your first job, that's... Yeah. Uh, are you proud of that? Yeah, it could have been much shorter, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, especially in the in the world that we live right now, I really appreciate it. That's what I said. That my first word, I think, it was gratitude, uh, not only for the job that I do, where I do it, with who, and uh, and yeah, um, that's what I love. What I do, it's no coincidence. I feel really lucky, um, and hopefully, we can continue uh, for a long time. Um, across those two fifty games, you've had lots of ups. Can you just yeah. talk to us about probably the last two months or six weeks? How that's been? I know you've been quite positive going into press conferences, but yeah. you must feel like you've had some bad luck, some things go against you. Just what's it been like for the last two months or six? Weeks? I know from my side is when I plan the season and I have a start and finish, and these are journeys. Like we all go travel in the bus together. It's going to be a bump, it's going to be bad weather, so things are going to happen. My thing is how I'm going to navigate, how I'm going to make the other navigates with me throughout that period, because it's going to happen. It's guaranteed that it's going to happen. Unless we become the invincible, we win every game, and then fine, we didn't have to go through it. But in the way that I predicted the season, it was going to happen. As many things that it happened, no. But I love how the team reacts, how the club reacts when there are difficulties. You just though before you went uh, up the Chelsea game, you said you want all the players to come back fit and yeah. healthy, so you might have Saka and Rice back. But now you just told us you're going to lose Ben White for yeah. a couple of months. So how are you going to plan for life without him? Yeah. It is a challenge. It was something that um, we didn't expect at all because, I mean, from in, we talk about consistency, availability in the defensive line, Ben has been probably the best with Gabby and Willie. Uh, so we miss him, but that's it. We're going to have to find alternatives. Um, that's it. There's a lot of positives as well because Declan is back, Bukai is back, Jurian is in a good place because he could not play the last game as well. That's the one that I was missing. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and Leo came back in a good place, Ricky's by the Every word Mikel Arteta said about Rice's fitness, Tini's return, and Victor Gioca's. Ahead of Arsenal's crucial Champions League clash with Sporting CP at the Jose Alvalade Stadium, manager Mikel Arteta addressed the media. The Gunners are seeking to secure their first away win of the campaign, aiming for just their second European victory on the road in nine matches. However, this task becomes even more challenging with the in-form striker, Victor Giocas, leading the line for sporting. Unsurprisingly, Arteta was asked about the Swedish forward, who has been heavily linked with a move to Arsenal, and about his squad's fitness heading into the match. Here's exactly what he had to say. On the squad's fitness. Everyone in the squad is fully fit and available to start. As I've mentioned before, Kieran Tierney is back after a long injury, which is fantastic news. He's been training with the team and is at the level to participate. On the importance of an away win. Winning away is definitely something we need to improve on. I think we've taken the right steps, especially considering how we played against Inter Milan. 
They're a team that's been dominant in their league and reached the Champions League final. We played well and dominated, but the reality is we didn't get the result. It's all about making sure we can do that consistently. We need to be ruthless, efficient in the final third, and take the necessary steps to secure the three points here. We're facing a massive challenge tomorrow, and we need to show we're capable of stepping up against opponents like this. On Victor Gioca's style of play, I understand the question, but Sporting have a number of individual qualities that allow them to win games in different ways. Gioca's, in particular, is a key player, and yes, he embodies many qualities of a modern forward. But it's not just about him. Sporting have great players throughout. On the current position in the Champions League table, we want to be higher, that's for sure, but we are where we are right now. We have to face the situation and control what we can. Our focus has to be on playing in a way that helps us win tomorrow and push us closer to qualification. On Arsenal's away form in Europe, not all of our away games have been the same. Some came when we were already through, but it's clear we need to improve those results. We need to understand what's been missing. Sometimes it's been performance, other times other factors. This is the next step we need to take as a team. On the four consecutive away games without scoring in the UCL, I wouldn't say that's the biggest issue but our efficiency in the final third needs to improve. We create chances in the Champions League, but we haven't been clinical enough to win consistently. The competition is about fine margins, small details. You have to get everything right, especially when playing away. On the challenge posed by Jayokas and Sporting CP. For the whole team, this is a big test. Looking at the numbers they produce in their domestic league and at home in the Champions League, where they've won every game and scored in every match, it's something we need to avoid. We'll need to be incredibly consistent and efficient to ensure we don't allow them to do the same. On Raya's progress. It's only natural that it takes time to adapt to a new club. I thought he had a very good season last year, but now he's more confident. He understands the system, and his presence feels more composed. He has built better relationships with his teammates and is in excellent form. On the difference compared to two seasons ago in Lisbon. It's a good question. It's always interesting to look back and assess the team from a few years ago. I watched both games to understand what worked and what didn't. It's hard to recognize the team from two years ago. You look at it differently now, but it's been a valuable exercise. What's great is that we're in a different competition now, one where we want to be and dominate, that's our goal. On both teams being stronger than before, I think so. All teams have evolved. What sporting has achieved is incredible. We've certainly come a long way from where we were two years ago, and this will be a great test. On whether the team will be the same despite Sporting's new manager. I wouldn't expect the same team. Every coach brings their own ideas, and we've analyzed what Sporting has done and what we can adjust. We'll try to understand as much as possible about how we can hurt them. I'm really looking forward to it. On using the Manchester City game to prepare for this match. That's one of the games we've looked at. They've played other Champions League and domestic matches, which we've analyzed to understand their behaviors against different opponents. Preparing for Manchester City is very specific, but to prepare for sporting, you need a broader view of their style and approach. We've looked at that game, and it was a standout one. This strategic approach from Arteta shows not only his awareness of the challenge ahead, but also his commitment to pushing his team to new heights in Europe.